movement disorders are classified uh, in two broad headings. One is hypokinetic movement disorder, another one is hyperkinetic movement disorders. Hyperkinetic movement disorders are broad types of hyperkinetic movement disorders and uh, they are broadly classified in two different headings. One is jerky and one is non-jerky. Jerky movement disorders are usually non-rhythmic and uh, they are like tics, chorea, myoclonus and non-jerky hyperkinetic movement disorders are usually rhythmic and uh, they are mostly tremor and dystonia. Uh, but there is an exception that dystonia can be sometimes jerky also. So we need to be very careful when we classify hyperkinetic movement disorders. So if we come to the hyperkinetic movement disorders, like I said, that uh, first is the categorization. And the second is to like uh, think of any treatable movement disorders, like some of the conditions uh, like uh, in infectious movement disorder or autoimmune movement disorders, or sometimes iatrogenic like drug-induced movement disorders. We need to rule them out because their treatment will be entirely different. Like uh, for infectious movement disorders, we will be treating the infection. And for autoimmune movement disorder, we will be treating the patient with some immune mediated agents. And for iatrogenic, usually it's a drug induced. So we need to cut down the drugs and uh, the patient will be all right. Once we have removed all these three factors, we need to identify the phenomenology. And uh, like I said that uh, there are different etiology for different types of hyperkinetic movement disorder. So for example, if I take tremor, which is a uh, non-jerky type of hyperkinetic movement disorders, we need to broadly categorize that what type of tremor patient has. And based on the new classification, the tremor has like two broad uh, classification. One is axis 1 and axis 2. So in the axis 1, we look into the clinical phenomenology, like the distribution of tremor, the type of tremor, and the activation procedures. And in type 2 or maybe the axis 2, uh, we look at the etiology of the tremor. And this classification was taken from the dystonia classification in 2013, where dystonia was classified exactly on the same line, axis 1 and 2, where axis 1 is the clinical feature and axis 2 is the etiology. So we make a classification and the classification should be based on the clinical phenomenology of the patient and based on the axis 1 feature we make a syndromic diagnosis and based on the syndromic diagnosis we think of etiology in axis 2 and then we think of the treatment for any particular hyperkinetic movement disorder.